Well, the gorilla ones are nice. Part of it is the camera. Uh, if you have a heavy camera, that's one thing. But uh, you can buy, I have a tripod here that cost a dollar at the dollar store, I think. Someone abducted it. Uh, any, a tripod, uh, I'll talk a little bit about tripods. Tripods, that's one of the questions, the debatable questions on the 11 questions that you don't have a list of that I'm going to send to you. Uh, <clears throat> you should all write down my email address. Because if you want to communicate with me, I don't want you to write, I don't want you to give me your email address. I want you to send me an email. It just has to say hi. Now I have you as positively that works. And you have mine positively, because mine is easy. It's Jerry. J E R R Y at A M B N dot org. A M B N, that's very A M B N. And I'll send you anything you want. Where were we? On the on the tripod. One person said that a tripod is your sharpest lens. Any picture that you ever take will be twice as sharp, twice as good, if it's done with a tripod. That brings us to cameras. This camera, uh, this is a point and shoot camera. In order to take a picture, you see what's back here. And you hold it like this. That's what most people use, correct? Then there's other cameras that are a little like this, but they have an eye. You can look through it that way. You always want one that you can look through it. Because when you're doing this, a couple of things are happening. Number one, uh, you cannot have the steadiness required. See, the, the, the manufacturers, the technical people, they know you're going to wiggle. So for an extra $200, you can have uh, uh, a lens that will wiggle with you. When you go this way, it'll go that way, and it'll be steady. You don't need that. That's like having uh, Kodak made a camera, and people had red eye. So Kodak invented something to get rid of the red eye, or sold it for a buck. Re removal of red eye in the cameras is, we have a picture out there of a loon. If it had red eye reduction, it would be a duck. <laughs> the cameras like this, you need to have a viewfinder to look through. This, this goes well on a, not only is a tripod important for a lot of things you take, but when you have a tripod, it's best not to press the, not to take the picture. To set the camera to take the picture as though you were going to be in it. You know, self-portrait. Because then you set it there, and you run over there like you wouldn't have your picture taken. But if you do that, now you're not touching it, and when it takes the picture, it's absolutely rock solid. Now, why is that important? Everything connects to everything else in this, this thing. It's important because when you get home and you put the picture in your computer, you see this beautiful picture which I took the other day at Doors Pond. The only thing about it was I saw a better picture within the picture. I didn't see the picture when I was thinking of it, but there it was. There's, I took this picture for bridge. But there's three guys out there, I didn't know what they were doing. Couldn't even see them hardly. But when I got home, I saw what they were doing. They were ice fishing. And they had a red tail. It was a beautiful picture. Well, if I take this picture that's this big and I got this little picture in here and I want to use that little picture, What's going to happen if I don't have a solid, sharp, well-taken, well-exposed, steady picture? It's going to be fuzzy and so forth. So I can go back and take the picture. So anytime you can do something with a tripod, you should use it. Another one of the 11 things that I'm sending you, with one exception, is always use prime lenses, not zoom lenses. The only exception is G, because when he goes to Alaska, he doesn't want to carry half a dozen lenses. And I don't blame him. Questions? Want to take a little short break so you can go over the pictures out there and have a cup of coffee? No? Yes? No. OK. I want to know why not to use a zoom lens. OK. I wish, does anybody here speak French a little bit or anything? Yes. OK. Well, there's a, I'm really, had a time. I, this is one of my heroes in life, is Henry Cartier Bresson, I think his name is. Does that sound right? Yeah. World famous photographer. That's him. Did I say it right? No, no, no. I'm just telling her that 
why not use the zoom lens? I told him that's him. Oh, he doesn't well. want to use the zoom lens. I have zoom lenses. <laughs> I have zoom lenses. Henry Cartier, well, it doesn't matter how I pronounce it if you've never heard it before. Oh, Henry, for 50 years, he had one camera and one lens. Ansel Adams said, this is a book, I probably forgot it. Ansel Adams said, the negative is the score, the print is the production. Isn't that beautiful? That's poetry. What's the question about? Oh, the, why not the zoom? zoom? Because here's why. Uh, if you were going to, there's a lot of reasons. One reason is it gives you another decision you have to make. That's mine. Size to what might be nice. What do you set it on? You can set them on anything. My son in law walked by one and he's into photography. Here's the zoom lens controversy. Zoom lenses, uh, if you're going to, if you have a, uh, they're expensive, more expensive. They're not as well made as a prime lens. There's more decisions for you to make. Uh, the, the, the less decisions that you have to make, we're thinking now not so much in, the, in the, the mechanics of a camera as we are in the ability to see, a, see an image that you want to put down because you might want it over your couch. And if you want an image that's over your couch, you want the sharpest lens, you want it on a tripod, you want to be able to maybe do a panorama. Uh, a, I happen to have a Canon, but a Nikon does the same thing. I have a 50 millimeter prime lens They've been making it for 50 years, the same lens. There's no moving parts. It's all, uh, it's been done so long and so much that it's inexpensive and it's, the sh it's sharp. Very, when I say sharp, we're getting back to the guys fishing in the lake. With a zoom lens, you're not going to have a sharper picture at the same, whether it's 75 millimeter or wherever you have it set. They're expensive, they're heavy, they serve a purpose. And unless you go, and for most people they're fine, but if you go a little deeper, you might be better off with prime lenses. I think you probably assumed that I was more sophisticated than that. I'm using either my iPhone or a point and shoot. So I, so I was thinking like using the zoom function on either my iPhone or whatever. I think You're thinking about a separate lens. Okay, that zoom function is a very good question. Okay. I'm not sure the answer someone here will tell me. I'll tell you what I think it is. Yep. Uh, when, you're, when you're zooming with some cameras, uh, when you buy a camera and it says, uh, this one I think says, uh, let's see, it says six megapixels, some cameras will zoom and it'll say optical zoom. Others will say digital zoom. I'm not sure if the iPhone, which I which is just rang, yeah. whether it's using digital or optical zoom. I don't know which. If it's uh, if it's digital, fine. If it's uh, I mean, if it's optical, fine. But if it's digital, it isn't. All 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 um, digital zoom is doing is taking something like this and taking a magnifying glass and looking at it. It isn't making the original image any sharper. It's just you are looking at it through a magnifying glass. Whereas a optical zoom is using more glass to make it wider or narrower, whichever way you're zooming. You can Google it. <laughs> Bill. Close. Bill. Um, Dick. <laughs> there is a Phil there somewhere. <laughs> We're scanning bunches of old black and white pictures from anywhere from 1912 through 1930. Okay. Have they been in an album? Some. Some. Yeah. You know, it, it, it was the quintessential, we've got the negatives, they were in a hot attic, okay, and they're beautiful. 
printed rate. But anyway, to keep those pictures is JPEG format okay? And what density to take a 2x4, 3x5, and so it can go to a 8x10 with some clarity? Well, you mentioned scanning. There's two ways that you can, if you have a photograph, whether you're going to scan it or whether you're going to photograph it. And I have, I am not sure. I thought about doing it both ways. But while we're on the subject of scanning, if you have 50 or 60 four by six old pictures and they haven't been in the mail, they're not sticky, you can have them done for you for pennies a piece. There's places that do it, you just Google it. <coughs> I'm not sure if I take this, maybe someone here knows. We take this and I put it on a scanner and then I make a picture of it. Or I take this, and I take my camera and I take a picture of it, which is going to give me what's the best result. Now, I'm leaving here with something. I'm leaving. Remember I said you're going to leave here with more questions and answers? I'm leaving here with a question. Unless somebody here knows that, I don't know. I've had much better result with a scanner than with a camera. Okay, that would be, the scanner would be a little more definitive because you put it on there and you scan it. The camera, there's lighting, there's distance, the lens, how sharp is it? Uh, what's the color of the light? There's all kinds of conditions. So probably, I've answered my own question, scanning might be the best way to do it. Uh, JPEG, when I said what Ansel Adams said about uh, the negative is the uh, score and the print is the production, when you're, somebody mentioned JPEG, some of you have cameras that give you a choice of JPEG 1, 2, 3, 4, different sizes of JPEG, and RAW. Does the word RAW mean something to most people on your cameras? So we don't know whether you have like a $1,200 this and you've got a $15,000. I know you have a, you have a guy with a big camera, right? But there's JPEG, and why is there five different JPEGs? The reason it's five different JPEGs is because they give you, as the numbers, they get smaller and smaller or bigger and bigger, they're less and less uh, accurate, desirable. Why would they have a choice like that? They had a choice like that because at one time you couldn't get much information on one of these cards or on your computer. It was slow and everything speed sped up. There's no reason on a camera to have any more than high quality JPEG. And there might be a couple of exceptions to that. One would be if you're going to take a picture of somebody sliding into second base, and you want to take 30 shots one after the other, and you want to load quickly onto your memory card, you might want to use a lower JPEG. But you realize that when you do that, you're not going to be able to get the same kind of print that you would get if you used a higher quality JPEG. But when every camera that you have takes does not use JPEG when it takes the picture. It doesn't use JPEG. That's not how a camera works. A camera takes a picture in RAW. It's ones and zeros. It's on a sensor. Then it converts it to JPEG. RAW is like negative, and some of them you can take pictures in RAW. If you take a picture in RAW, there is no light balance. It doesn't matter what the light is, because you take care of that post photography. So RAW is the way to go. But why don't you? Well, for one thing, RAW image is so much bigger than a regular image. It also takes longer to load into your memory card. So a lot of things like that. Plus, it, but, but, but it's not destructive. It's non-destructive. Once you have a picture in RAW, it's going to be the same as a negative. Nothing's going to happen to it. Any JPEG picture that you open up in your computer and you look at it, and you make, even if you don't make a change, you just look at it. And then you close it. It loses a little. It compresses a little. Now, that might take 100 times or 200. I'm not sure. But it does compress automatically until finally you have no image. Can I offer, we've scanned a thousand pictures for the Her Heritage Commission. And New Hampshire Historical Society said TIFF and 300 DPI is the most versatile. 
you know, for size. Give them 300. I say, I don't know 50 years from now, TIP's going to be around. You know what I mean? You know, I, I, that's the kind of, that's what I want to know. <coughs> I think it's historical. They should know, yeah, exactly. Well, 300 is as much as you'd need to make almost any kind of a print. Yeah, it sounds sounds accurate to me. We've been doing some of them at 1,200, but they obviously take longer to scan and take up more room. I want to mention that uh, I want to thank the library for being so kind to us and letting us have this space. And. Uh, it was a complete surprise to me that we have all these refreshments, which uh, there's probably certain cultures that would continue to consider disingenuous if we didn't go over and have a cookie. <laughs> so everybody should have at least one cookie. And uh, we're here for a while longer. I think that a whole bunch of you here, some of you must have some questions. And one more thing I want to mention, though, is that we have a camera club that you, some of you would enjoy first and third Wednesdays of the month right here, 10 o'clock in the morning. Now, if you're working people and that type of thing, you can't, then it would be up to one of you to volunteer to say, well, why don't we have one in the evening and get it started, and I'll help you with that. Now I'm going to answer questions. I don't think I've missed anything on my... We didn't show you anything on there, did we? Oh, yes, excuse me. I took a picture of that thing over there, the stand. And I just took a second, I took it, I put it in here, stick it in the computer. Let's see what happens. There's a lot of light on that, so it doesn't. But that's the thing that's over there with the $39 camera. These used to be $200. When I call it the $39 camera, you can go to Rite Aid and get a 6 megapixel camera for $39. Just like this. Would everybody please do me a favor? Ask me a question. Okay, okay something you said a couple minutes ago. That if you have a bunch of pictures that have been in a box and not in an album, yep. uh, you can get them digitized for pennies. Yes. For pennies. And yes. then you said Google it. I don't want to send my pictures someplace. I, you know, I'd like to find someplace local that could do it. Are you implying that you would have to send? Well, the place I'm talking about, uh, I'm a big fan of sending things and buying things uh, online. I'm, I'm totally trusting of that whole process. I don't go to Best Buy to buy anything. I go to Adorama if it has to do with well, the charity. I'm worried about the U.S. mail. Don't, don't use the mail then, use FedEx and have them and insure them for $10 million or something. If you take them to a place like Honk and Camera, you, you, there will you'll be an arm and a leg. I mean, just, the, there are companies that do nothing but that. They have to be neatly packaged, 500 or 100 or 50 of them all together. You ship them out, and you'll get a CD back and all the pictures back. And they're done beautifully. So if I'm Googling it, what am I putting oh, in? Well, it well, you've got my interest up now. You're going to send me an email and say, would you expand on that? And I'll send you a link. I just want to say, Amber, I'm not there yet. I'd use them for other things. And uh, I found the service excellent. Who? Adorama? Yeah. Adorama? That's something else on the 11 things I'm going to email you because I forgot them at home. Uh, the reason I like Adorama, and B&H uh, is another one. They're both New York companies. Uh, is that you can, anything you want to know at all about photography, there are, it's on their site in the form of a, a video. You don't, you know, it's, you don't have to pay for classes, you don't have, it's there. Almost anything you can think of. Uh, you never want to do business with any camera club that's a camera company that has a Brooklyn address. That's a sweeping generality, but it's true. A Brooklyn address. B-O-R-A-M-A. Yeah. Look it up and uh, 
another thing, very quickly about, well, we, we didn't talk much about exhibiting. One thing we left out, which I think is time to do, and that is, if you go to our site, which is asprygroup.com, uh, and when you send me an email, I'll send you a whole bunch of stuff back, and you can do that. We have, uh, we have a site on SmugMug. Now, you could back up your, your photographs on uh, Carbonite, for example, or one of those places, but if you have your own site on SmugMug, it's about $40 a year. Now, here's the advantages of SmugMug over all the rest. It's yours only. There's nothing else on there. There are no ads. There are no pop-ups. SmugMug gives you the choice of all kinds of different ways of presenting your photography. You have galleries. You can have galleries that are protected. You can have by a, a it might be a family uh, event, and you protect them with a password. You might have another one. You may at some point in your life decide that you want to do something that earns money with your photography. If that happens, you can always upgrade your smug mug to a fulfillment site. A fulfillment site means that they, they look at your picture and they say, I want to buy one of those. You tell them how much you want to sell it for. You're not involved at all. Smug mug prints the picture, sends it to them, and sends you the money. Those kinds. So SmugMug is a great place to have keep your pictures. And you can have as many as you want, 1,000, 10,000, and uh, I recommend it highly. That takes care of SmugMug. If you could show the group, if you could get on to it, because the display of your pictures is very nice. Um, and uh, can you find it? Because they might enjoy that. OK. I especially appreciate that. Well, this is my site, which is not the. Can you uh, unlike the place a little bit? Uh, let's see if I can get your the Astrid site. This is Astrid. Anybody know how this works? Oh, his, this is our site, and these are the photographers. So, this is something else I didn't tell you. Now, Gene is sitting here, so I'm going to click on his name. And his, uh, this is probably what I'm going to tell you now is worth the, uh, the price of the whole thing tonight. This is a Tamron site. Now, Tamron's a free site. The only thing about it is that they are, it's commercial. They're, they want to sell you a lens. But here's what they do you build your own museum. You put in the chairs, you put in the ceiling, you put in the floor, and you can put 14 prints on there of yours. And you can email your friends and say that's where they are. And guess what? After you've done that, if you've got 14 more, you can have another one. And the other one, you can, I don't know if we can do this on here or not. Can we change things or anything? I don't know. Well, you can click on any one of them. Let's click on one. Isn't that a beautiful picture? It's taken by Gene here, he's over 50. <laughs> so this is, this is called Tamron, and Tamron is a site you can put your pictures on tonight. You can sign up, it doesn't cost anything, you can put 14 pictures, and what you really enjoy is you pick the lighting, you pick the chairs, the rugs, the walls, the frames, the colors, the whole thing. It's unbelievable. really have people here on Thursday night and have to know what they're doing. <laughs> here we go. Have they ever 
anyone here put any slides on, um, stand in slides for put on CDs or DVDs? I've, I've scanned slides. I have a little little machine that, that I bought for $99, and they'll, they'll uh, you can put them in, and they'll scan them at uh, three megapixels. You know, it's not that much, but still on, on a slide, 35 millimeter slide, it, uh, it comes out pretty good. I've done quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what did you put them on? I, I just put them on, on the disk. I put them on the, the flash drive. I put them in my computer. I had I had a whole tray of slides, and I, I, I scanned them, put them in the computer, and now I have them in the computer. See? This program you're seeing is Aperture. You have a package. Is, that, is it on my Mac? You have an iMac? I know, you can put it on. Oh, okay. $75. I have nothing else, folks, and if you, if you put is there an end, ending ceremony? <laughs> if you put photos on that Tamron site and you wanted to share it with somebody, do they have to create a password at No, you can just go look at it. You just send them an email and give them the link and they can go look at it. It's great to do it because it's, it's free. And it's a lot of fun changing, you know, chairs and all that stuff. <laughs> I, like I think you can. I'm, I'm not positive, but I think I you can. I know on Flickr and those things, you can keep it private. Well, you can on Smugmug, that I'm sure of. Camera, I'm not sure. I don't like grandchildren's pictures out on the internet. No. Let them I still prefer, I, I don't, right now we're using Tamron, but we're, I'm trying to encourage our members to switch over all to Smugmug. All on one site. It's just that each person has their own gallery, and you can have more than one gallery. And some can be private, they can be public, and they could even be in the future if you wanted to a commercial. A commercial site, however, is not $40 a year. It's more like 300 Any other questions? Yeah. Um, Jeff, closing remarks, Matt? Thank you so much. No, that was fantastic. And the last questions? Matt, here's the board. We'll, we'll, some of, we'll all be back tomorrow morning and clean up for you, Matt. <laughs> it's okay. We'll do another meeting going on anyway, so. How are you doing? What's this? Oh, you're tired. Oh, by the way, when you go, if anybody who hasn't seen the exhibit, please go look. On the way, in the hallway. If you're seeing the Thank you.